You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. India sends stern message on terrorism. Pakistan harboring anti-India Khalistani masterminds. And the resistance front, an offshoot of Lashkar e Taiba, continues to issue terror threat to Kashmiri pundits. Pakistan is misusing all its state mercenaries to provoke anti-India sentiments. To disrupt peace and harmony in the largest democracy of the world, the notorious South Asian nation is attempting to promote separatism and terrorism in its Punjab state. In the border area of Tarantaran in Indian Punjab, a police station was attacked by a rocket launcher-like weapon. A report. In the border area of the Tarantaran in Indian Punjab, a police station was attacked by a rocket launcher-like weapon. After the attack, the Punjab police reached the spot of the attack and the rocket used in the attack was recovered from inside the police station. Along with the rocket, a pipe-like object was also reportedly recovered. Meanwhile, in another development in the case, the National Investigation Agency and the Punjab police recovered one of three rocket launchers used to target the police station in Tarantaran. Search operations are underway to find the rest of the RPGs. कल रात तकरीबन 11 बज के 22 तेई मिनट पे ए जड़ा हाईवे तो एक ग्रेनेड फायर कीता गया यूजिंग आरपीजी जड़ा पुलिस स्टेशन सरहाली दे सुविधा सेंटर ते ओथे हिट कीता है तो इस दे इस दे रिगार्डिंग असी एफआईआर यूएपीए दी दर्ज कर ली है साडी फोरेंसिक टीम मौके ते आ गई है आर्मी दी भी स्क्वाड इथे आ चुकी है असी इस नो टेक्निकली ते फोरेंसिकली इन्वेस्टिगेट करके जड़े सीन ऑफ क्राइम तो जड़े भी क्लूज हैगे ओ इकट्ठे कर रहे हैगे so that to re reconstruct what happened. Hours after the attack, the US-based Khalistani terrorist organization Sikh for Justice claimed responsibility for the attack. According to reports, Lakhbir Singh Landa of the Khalistan Liberation Force could be the main mastermind behind the attack. According to sources, gangster Landa, who is currently residing in Canada, allegedly devised a plan with Pakistan's ISI to strike Punjab. It is being claimed that the attack on the Taran Taran police station was carried out by Khalistani under instructions from Pakistan's intelligence agency. Punjab police have revealed the involvement of Pakistan's inter-services intelligence in the Mohali blast case also. It was found that the Khalistani terrorist group Babur Khalsa International and local gangsters were involved in the bomb blast carried out at the behest of the Pakistani intelligence agency, ISI. The Punjab police and counter-intelligence wing have detained nearly 12 persons for their alleged involvement in the Taran Taran attack so far. Meanwhile, Sikh for Justice has announced legal and financial support for those arrested in connection with the same. In a video message, the Sikh for Justice Chief Gurpatwan Singh Pannun said, Those who have been detained by the DGP Yadav and CM Bhagwant Man government, I urge you to contact Sikh for Justice. We will provide you with legal as well as financial help. The Khalistanis, by working for India's enemies, are committing a crime that goes against their gurus, who work to unite India and their own kith and kin. They have done enough damage to the legacy of their gurus. Pakistan, on the other hand, has been eliminating its Sikh population for decades through killings, rapes, abductions and forced marriages of young women. Yet it is funding and fueling Khalistani terrorism and separatist movement globally to achieve its sinister plans to break up India. India has stressed the need to address the double standards encountering terrorism 
and highlighted the specific challenges with which the counterterrorism architecture is currently grappling. Presiding over the UNSC briefing, India underlined the specific challenges that counterterrorism architecture is currently dealing with. A report. India has always described terrorism as an existential threat to global peace and security. India stressed the need to address the double standards encountering terrorism and highlighted the specific challenges with which the counterterrorism architecture is currently grappling. Presiding over the UNSC briefing, global counterterrorism approach, challenges and way forward, India's external affairs minister S.J. Shankar said, there is a challenge to deal with double standards, both inside and outside the council. For too long, some have persisted with the approach that terrorism is just another instrument or stratagem. Those invested in terrorism have used such cynicism to carry on. Notably, India's remarks was a strong reference to repeated holds and blocks on proposals by India to blacklist Pakistan-based terrorists in the UN Security Council Sanctions Committee by veto-wielding permanent member China. On the challenge of terrorism, even as the world is coming together with a more collective response, multilateral platforms are being misused to justify and protect perpetrators. The world has witnessed the expansion of Al-Qaeda, Daesh, Boko Haram and several other terror groups. India has reiterated that we cannot forget the old habits and established networks are still alive, especially in South Asia. While stressing that the contemporary epicenter of terrorism remains very much, India's External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar has stated that we cannot let another 9-11 of New York or 26-11 of Mumbai happen again. Today's briefing is part of India's ongoing efforts in the Security Council to reinvigorate the counter-terrorism agenda. And that is overdue because the threat of terrorism has actually become even more serious. We have seen the expansion of Al-Qaeda, Daesh, Boko Haram and Al-Shabaab and their affiliates. At the other end of the spectrum are lone wolf attacks inspired by online radicalization and biases. But somewhere in all of this, we cannot forget that old habits and established networks are still alive, especially in South Asia. The contemporary epicenter of terrorism remains very much active, whatever gloss may be applied to minimize unpleasant realities. Without naming any country, External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar had earlier slammed the neighboring state after Pakistan Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari unceremoniously raked up the issue of Kashmir during a UN gathering in New York to discuss the issue of multilateralism. He also treated a Pakistani journalist to some brutal reality check for trying to blame India for terrorism in South Asia. The more terrorism Pakistan perpetrates, the more victim guarded plays. Pakistan has accelerated efforts to project India as supporting the terror groups. Such articulation is aimed at seeking an alibi for failing to control terrorism despite a large number of operations. It is also aimed at convincing the Biden administration to press the pause button in the strategic relations with India. It is also to convince the Chinese that India would be responsible for any attacks on its interests. Moving on. Afghanistan has been marked with isolated attacks taking place across the length and breadth of the country, particularly after the Taliban stormed to power in August of last year. Since then, desperate militia groups in their bid to exert their dominance have launched attacks. In the latest, the Islamic State group targeted a Chinese-owned hotel in Afghanistan's capital that left three asylums dead and at least two of the hotel guests injured 
as they tried to escape by jumping out from a window. A report. On December 12, a powerful explosion rocked a popular hotel in Afghanistan's capital, Kabul. A loud blast followed by gunshots were heard when three assailants attacked a hotel in Sharinu area, terrifying many residents and Chinese tourists staying in the hotel. According to media reports, the building was frequently visited by Chinese businessmen in the Afghan capital. Videos posted on social media showed fire and thick smoke rising from a lower floor window of the hotel building. Another video shot from a building opposite the hotel showed men escaping from another window, one of them clinging desperately to an air conditioning unit before falling several floors. The cause of the blast was not immediately clear, but later terror group Islamic State claimed responsibility for the attack. <laughs> The intricate assault which allegedly targeted Chinese nationals appeared to be the most recent in a string of violent incidents aimed at the few nations that the Taliban counts as allies. Afghanistan has been hit by regular attacks since the Taliban group seized power in August last year. Many of them have been claimed by the Islamic State. In September, Islamic State targeted the Russian embassy in Kabul. A suicide bomber blew himself up outside the Russian embassy in the heart of Kabul, killing two Russian diplomats in what appeared to be the first attack on a foreign diplomatic mission in Afghanistan since the fall of the country to the Taliban. Islamic State has grown to be the Taliban's most formidable adversary. The conflict between the two factions is currently muddy and violent. After the combat following the Taliban takeover ended, the security situation in the nation had improved, but it is now thought to be deteriorating. You see, Taliban has been a fighting force all along. And at this stage, they need to learn how to govern. And that has been their major challenge. Now, as we know, that there are large number of groups because Taliban is also not a homogeneous entity. And therefore, what we see is that there is there are many challenges that it is facing. It is still waiting for recognition from the world. It is also uh, hoping that it will continue to receive the funding that has been committed so that it can also provide relief to the people. Terrorism poses a persistent threat to Afghanistan, while at the same time, the Taliban have impeded its transition to freedom. The nation is currently experiencing a serious humanitarian and economic calamity. The promise that existed when women played a significant part in society has been replaced with starvation, despair and violence. Afghanistan is going through a very difficult time and the de facto rulers in the war-torn country are not willing to listen to what world leaders are demanding. Instead, they are playing the blame game. On one hand, they are violating human rights in the country and on the other hand, the regime is holding West responsible for all the challenges country facing at the moment. Taliban rulers are not ready to accept the fact that in the absence of conservative ideology, situation in Afghanistan would have been in a much better situation. Terror group Kashmir Fight has issued a fresh threat to Kashmiri Pandit government employees and has threatened to carry out more targeted killings. In a letter addressed to Kashmiri Pandit employees, the terror group has warned that they would turn transit colonies of Kashmiri Pandits into graveyards. This came just days after the terror group threatened nearly 60 Kashmiri Pandit employees that are working as teachers under the Prime Minister's rehabilitation package in the Kashmir Valley. A report. 
Targeted violence against Kashmiri pundits has been a long-standing issue in Kashmir. Kashmir fight blog, the mouthpiece of the resistance front, Pakistan's new terror outfit and an offshoot of the Lashkar-e Taiba group has been threatening Kashmiri pundits' government employees residing in the area. In the latest, terror group has issued a fresh threat to Kashmiri pundit government employees and has threatened to carry out more targeted killings. In the letter addressed to Kashmiri Pandit employees, the terror group has warned that they would turn transit colonies of Kashmiri Pandits into graveyards. The Lashka threat to the Kashmiri Pandit government employees working in the Kashmir Valley is yet again a signal that the militants are facing the pressure of the enormous success that the Indian government and the Indian Army has gained in the Kashmir Valley curb terrorism. This is one more attempt by the militants to keep the Kashmir issue alive. But as always, the Indian Army will come with a heavy hand and destroy any such move by the militants to once again terrorize the Kashmiri Pandits in the Kashmir Valley. Notably, this is not the first time that the Kashmiri fight terror group has threatened Kashmiri pundits. Earlier in December, the terror group threatened nearly 60 Kashmiri pundits employees that are working as teachers under the Prime Minister's rehabilitation package in the Kashmir Valley. In an open letter, the Islamic terror organization pledged to continue targeted killings against Kashmiri Hindus. They ranted about how the non-locals and Kashmiri Hindus were stealing employment and land from Kashmir. Terrorists have targeted Kashmiri pundits and non-Kashmiri migrants in the Kashmir Valley since the beginning of the last year. As per media reports, at least six members of the minority community were killed in targeted attacks this year. The victims have been local policemen, Hindu and Sikh government employees as well as non-locals working in the valley. Recently, terrorist organizers based in Pakistan have modified their approach to attacks and targeted killings. They are currently focusing primarily on soft targets. Islamabad also employs local Kashmiri youths with no prior criminal histories for targeted killings. The masterminds in Pakistan can easily avoid their involvement by claiming that these youths are carrying out targeted killings, making it appear to be a local issue. Though the year 2022 has seen few killings of Kashmiri pundits by the militants in the Kashmir Valley, however, if we see the statistics from 2019, when Article 370 was revoked in Jammu and Kashmir, the number of killings of the Kashmiri Pandits has gone down tremendously with each passing year since 2019. The militants want to keep the Kashmir issue alive internationally and hence they are now resorting to new ways of terrorism like hybrid warfare etc. Kashmir was witnessing the return of peace once again and people had understood that terrorism and separatism cannot flourish in Jammu and Kashmir. This is the biggest pain for Pakistan, which has been trying to internationalize the Kashmir issue for more than seven decades. By creating a communal rift, it wants to give few more days of life to the dying terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. It also wants to reinstate fears in the minds of common Kashmiri people that to get killed, one need not to be an influential person. Being from a minority community is sufficient enough. Their tactics are kill one and scare a thousand. This is how they succeeded in hounding out the entire population of Kashmiri Pandits from their roots of more than 5,000 years engraved in the soil of the valley. 
However, such barbaric terror acts will not succeed in undermining Jammu and Kashmir's development journey as people in Kashmir will not let this conspiracy succeed. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.